Welcome back, warriors, to the Christian Market Watch. This is Chili. I am your host, and today we're gonna cover headline news and share with you how that links into faith. So please be sure to watch to the end. Let's go. I got news from Israel. This is very, very significant, actually, in terms of its size. Its size is ten billion over the next five years, so two billion a year. This is crazy but what it is israel is signing a historic trade deal really with its longtime enemies as you know historically israel is god's people and these two families have never gotten along together they used to be brothers but it's hard to eat a meal when you have two sides trying to eat each other really so this is why this is significant and this is a crazy thing this trade agreement is the largest ever between israel and any arab country and yes and last year the trade between them despite inviting um is 885 million it really tells you what's actually running the economy there and from my take what we're seeing in the world at the moment is a very very bifurcated economy so increasingly um we know us is currently in power and that dynamic is changing so there's another um power rising at the moment the china um and countries are starting to shift their alliances we are increasingly seeing places like china uae India, they're starting to form a little alliance on the side and they are saying okay let's trade using our own currency rather than the US dollar which has been you know predominantly how we buy our petrol our fuel our grains commodities um, you know so these, this is rising and it's increasingly become stronger and stronger as US really to be honest is really starting to weaken as we see in the economy with all this inflation news at the moment and them also spending all the money on war worldwide so for me the fact that israel is trying to be part of that side of the alliance um honestly i don't think it's gonna go well for them i hope it doesn't run into a lot of trade deficits in the end i'm not trying to put israel down but historically god wants israel to be a separate nation for himself right now we know that most of israel um most of the jews are seculars and they don't necessarily believe in the original god that led them out of egypt um crossing the red sea signing the abrahamic covenant with them um a lot of them don't recognize that or put any significance to that they call themselves secular Jews, but a message out to the Jews right there. And I'm saying this from a position of love because I actually attend a Jewish messianic shul, a congregation. So out of love, I really want to say Israel, unfortunately, this is not going to go well for you. It may look like it is for the next couple years, but um, long term, I think you're going to see that your reliance on anything but God, your reliance on other countries to bail you out, your reliance on other countries to give you wealth and trade with you, to me, it is just a way for you to gain economic gains for yourself at the expense of being distinct from the world that you are called to live in. Like the story of Samson, when he cut his hair, he lost his power. And to me, Israel being in its own way living distinct life away from the corruption of the world and relying on Hashem Hashem is the word for what we know as God Yahweh I've just said the word okay I'm Christian I'm not Jew it's fine I can say it Yahweh or yud hey vav hey if you want to take the vowels out unless you turn back to Yahweh it's gonna be very very hard for you to find a standing on this world and I mean it because you don't understand that right now the actual ruler of the system is him the whole global economy that we just talked about today this is from Yahoo or Jeremiah 6 I am reading from the NIV version just because it's 
the words really hit my heart today. Verse 10, this is what the Lord your God says. Hashem says this, To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. If you're finding offense right now, God knew that that would be your reaction. Okay, let's just face the facts. They find no pleasure in it. But Jeremiah, Yeruman, Yahoo says, But I am full of the wrath of the Lord and I cannot hold it in. Imagine trying to hold God's anger inside your heart and like you want to be nice to people and you don't want to say it. And, and yet your, your heart is like on fire and it's going to burn through all of your skin cells if you don't let it out. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the young men gathered together. Both husband and wife will be caught in it. And oh, those weighed down with years. Their houses will be turned over to others together with their fields and their wives. When I stretch out my hand against those who live in the land, declares the Lord. You know, the Lord even breaks out into poetry. Even in English, we can hear that this is a poetic section. And when the Bible talks in this manner, um, it actually is trying to express God's heart. When the Bible is talking in normal language, it's talking about God's head. But here we're talking about God's heart. Here. From the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. Isn't this what this is all about here? This Israel signing this historic trade deal despite knowing that these two families should be living very, very separate lives and Israel being called to be distinct from the world that it is in, you have sacrificed that again. Prophets and priests alike, let's just say governments and people alike right now, all practice deceit. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. It's fine as long as there's money to be made. Peace, peace, they say. It's a peace treaty. Is a trade deal we have a deal when there is no peace sorry are they ashamed of the dis detestable conduct no they have no shame at all they don't even know how to blush this is horrible this is like a people that are numb in their hearts so much by gains and profit you know jews have been learned like jews were forced to learn to be good at business really because of all of the persecution that they had to endure um, a lot of them from the west i'm not saying that the west is clear here in fact very very guilty and i'm sorry for the holocaust okay um, i really truly am in me lives the spirit of yeshua spirit of hashem and he's a jew at heart so i'm identifying fine with the jews right here but but the Lord gave you a way to be good at business, not so that you can get your gains for yourself, but so that you can survive in this economic world and rely on Him. Mark my words, actually this is the Bible's words, there will come a day when all of these alliances will backfire on you to the point where the whole world will be against you if you don't think that anti-semitism is a problem at the moment it will be so increased such that everybody look left look right up down forward behind everywhere you see there will be people nations alliances against you to the point where you have no other choice but to rely on Hashem and that's when he will come to rescue you until you recognize that God's covenant with your country is still intact and in place you have a treaty with God happening where you are the weaker party and you have to fulfill your obligations of that treaty unless you realize that your country is in for some seriously chaotic and troubled times and your people will suffer. This is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient past, ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. God doesn't want to destroy you. No, 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 no. Because of human evil and false religion, the Holocaust happened, okay? And I'm very sorry about that because I also attending the Reformed Church and 
that's the bit that they don't recognize. They don't recognize that the ancestors, because obviously I'm Chinese, I'm not even Jew or anywhere near where Martin Luther is. And I'm very, very sorry for the hurt we have caused you as a reformed community. We were just trying to get back to the Bible, but we kind of lost hope because you guys are usually quite stubborn people, which is actually good in a way, okay? Um, it's good to have an opinion. And you have chutzpah, and that's really good. Um, but that chutzpah needs to be on the right right side of God's treaties with you. And I point to watchmen over you. God has, God wants the best for you. He doesn't actually want to, you know, for example, um, exert an authoritarian reign on you. What he actually does is just try to point you to the right path so that you can be rich. This is not what he promises to other countries. But if you ask for the ancient paths and ask where the good way is. I would say Deuteronomy, Leviticus, you know, you have those in your book, in your Tanakh, and you can read it, right? Ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is, and walk in it. And God's purpose is that um, if you walk in it, you will find rest for your souls. I'm getting very emotional here. But please, don't be one of those people that say we will not listen. Because here you earth, I am bringing disaster on these people and the fruit of the schemes because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Your sacrifices do not please me because you don't do them from the heart. And you don't recognize the Mashiach that has already come once and he will indeed sit on David's throne. But... He needed to come and deal with you and my sin as the first issue first. That's why he came the first time. And he died on the cross for you and me. Hashem actually put on, like my coat here, the garment of flesh, so that he could be one of us, one of you. In fact, more you than me, because <laughs> you're Jewish blood, to die for these people that he loves, you, the Jew. And once he has sorted that problem out, the second time he will come, and he will come with chariots, horses, and army, and take reign, and take vengeance over the enemies who didn't want him to be king the first time. Mark no words, it will be Jerusalem, it will be David's throne. And for the Christian believers and the messianic people who are Jews, who are hoping, and also the Gentiles, um, Gentile being by blood, non-Jew, I don't mean pagans, which is a different thing. And for all of us here, until the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and our Lord Yeshua, these troubles that we hear, inflationary pressures, extreme fear, volatility in the market, and a lot of Marxist, communist, authoritarian tribe trying to take control of the world because when the world is weak, a strong man and an invader will come and take it over. And we know behind that is none other than the devil, the adversary to Yahweh himself. But Adonai has a plan. He has a plan and he's swiftly bringing that about to happen. Nothing in this global economy is happening outside of him. And I just want to share that with you today. I kind of feel like in today's climate that is very, very important for us to even recognize that what's happening in the finance economy is not aside from his will. His will is let the world go in the chaos that it brought itself upon. He didn't cause it, but we brought it upon ourselves, okay? And like, if you want to live life without me, just go ahead and run the world yourself. I'm just gonna sit back here and let you run. But I will let you know that how you're running it is going to bring you to your ultimate ruin. That's when I'll institute my kingdom. That's his point of view right here. And I hope that you and I really take he heed. Um, and for everyone who has hope in the Lord. And for everyone who's suffering through this pain, this suffering, this inflation, um, this hurt, this loss of lives, loss of economic power. Um, I want to say there is reserved a day when God will restore and establish you firmly, like we were reading yesterday in the Bible. God bless you, and I hope that this has helped you and encouraged your heart and brings you a really clear perspective of where the whole world is, especially its spiritual reality, because together we can be informed and we can stay vigilant and alert. Stay vigilant. God bless you. Ah!